So Radiance is a study of endovascular ultrasound use for renal denervation. Uh, we've known for 80, 90 years that disconnecting the sympathetic nerves to and from the kidney with a surgical approach reduces blood pressure. We've known from spiral off last year that radiofrequency reduces blood pressure by disconnecting those same nerves. And today we demonstrated in a pre-powered trial of 146 patients randomized to treatment or sham control that endovascular ultrasound percutaneous procedure uh, can uh, disconnect the sympathetic nerves and reduce blood pressure by a clinically meaningful amount. It's a sham control procedure, so randomized one-to-one, -one, uh, 74 to denervation, 72 to sham control. So what we did was we took the patients to the cath lab, having taken them off drugs for a period of four weeks. So these are patients on no drugs at all. Uh, we do a percutaneous procedure with femoral arterial access, six French access, and then we pass a, a catheter up to the renal arteries, and then we use the Paradise device, which is an ultrasound catheter that inserts over a wire into the renal arteries. So what we're looking for is a renal artery uh, longer than 25 millimeters, which allows five millimeter energy deliveries in at least two sections of each renal artery. And that catheter can deliver energy from one to six millimeters into the renal adventitia, which allows uh, successful denervation of the renal sympathetic nerves. The advantage of the ultrasound catheter is that because it's able to penetrate out to six millimeters, we're able to do a relatively simple procedure, a minimalist procedure of two or three denervations in the proximal renal artery. And that's got a good chance of being able to denervate the sympathetic nerves bilaterally, as long as we have a main renal artery that's more than 25 millimeters. And with the current generation of technology, between four and eight millimeters in diameter. So the patients for this study were pre-screened with CT and MRI to allow us to have a good chance of selecting the right patients and deliver the treatment fairly effectively. It's a relatively simple procedure. We've uh, now demonstrated today in a trial powered for a six millimeter drop in blood pressure, which was based on the DINA hypertension trial that showed about a six millimeter drop in that trial from Michelle Assisi. So we used that number to power a trial to demonstrate a six millimeter drop between the two arms. And this is the first sham control trial to prospectively power and deliver an efficacious drop. So what we saw was an 8.5 millimeter drop in daytime ambulatory systolic pressure. That's a clinically meaningful amount where we'd expect from observational data sets, epidemiological data sets and drug studies, would expect that to be associated with a reduction in cardiovascular events of somewhere around the 20 to 30 percent mark. So clearly we have to demonstrate that in larger data sets and future trials, but we, this is very exciting that uh, we've had lifestyle interventions for patients with hypertension. We've had drug interventions for patients with hypertension. Despite 50 years of drugs, we know that half of patients with hypertension worldwide and not having their blood pressure controlled, partly because some of them don't get on with drugs, they don't like them or don't want them. Uh, and that's a lot of patients, that's 600 million patients who aren't at control worldwide. So there's a desperate need for new technologies and new treatments in hypertension. Today was a really important day because we not only had Radiant Solo, we had a second trial uh, of radiofrequency denervation, suggesting that the biological principle is sound and that we can achieve denervation with multiple technologies in an effective fashion and make a clinically important difference in blood pressure. I think we now have a new way of treating blood pressure. What we need to understand now is safety on larger data sets. We've got a technology here that's a relatively minimalist technology. We're able to denervate proximally because it's able to go deeper into the adventitia. Uh, it's a fairly quick procedure. The safety performance was excellent, but 74 patients had denervation. If once we've got several hundred patients and we've been able to follow them up for a little bit longer, we potentially have a new device and a new uh, treatment option for hypertension. That leads us on to more difficult questions as to who should have it. I imagine there are people who pay the bills for health insurance companies and governments who are not too fond of the idea of 1.2 billion hypertensive patients becoming candidates for a device interventional procedure. But patients don't like pills. So 50% of patients are not at control after 50 years and 15 different blood pressure pills. So patients want a new option. We want to give them that option as long as it is safe, effective, durable. And what we need are more trials, larger trials, longer follow-up, and once we have that, then I think it's going to be a personalized decision. I think we'll be talking to our patients saying, drugs are excellent, take drugs and you're gonna do fine. The alternative is we have a device here that in 20% of patients allowed them to come off pills altogether. This is only a two months, so we need to see how durable that is. But 20% of patients came off drugs, one in five. 
So I talk to patients a lot about these renal denervation trials. The spiral off trial from last year was one in eight. When I offer them a one in eight chance of coming off pills, if I can replicate those results, patients are excited by that. So perhaps not all doctors are, but patients are excited by that. Today we've shown one in five, and uh, I think that's important to a lot of patients with mild to moderate hypertension out there. So I think we've just got to, as I say, prove safety first. This isn't going onto the market tomorrow. Yeah. We've, we need responsible scientific trials, and everybody involved in this field is in agreement with that. Mm -hmm.